Hi, it's Raisa. Today we're gonna to talk about being left out. When I was in eighth grade, I had two best friends. We did everything together. We hung out on weekends, we would talk on the phone. Our lives revolved around the three of us doing stuff together. I remember one day, me and one of my friends decided Three's a crowd, so we decided to cut out the third girl in our group. One day after school, we walked up to her before the buses came, and we were like, hey, listen, we don't wanna be your friend anymore, and we walked away. Now, I know that most of you are thinking, I have never been that mean. And it's true, most people that are hearing this have never been that mean, but I was. But I know that was something that we've all experienced, we've all felt left out. We've all felt uninvited and unwanted. And feeling left out is the worst feeling. Maybe there was a party that was happening and everyone you know got an invitation except for you. Maybe you thought everyone was gonna kinda hang out and chill at home this weekend, but then you get on Instagram and you see everyone's story and they're all hanging out except nobody filled you in on it. Anytime we get left out of something, you can't help but start immediately thinking, man, why didn't I get invited? What, is there something that I'm lacking? Is there something wrong with me? What is so bad about me that I couldn't be there? And why does it feel so bad to be left out? I'm just bringing this up because some of us may feel that way even here at church. And maybe you don't feel this way, but some of your friends feel this way. They feel uninvited and unwanted. I had a friend one time tell me like, yo, if I showed up in church, the whole place would burn down. And I was like, bro, it absolutely would. No, I didn't say that to him. Instead I paused and I was like, man, why do you feel that way? How come you feel like in church, it's the one place that you don't belong? It broke my heart that this place that I get to call home, he didn't feel like he belonged in. But it didn't surprise me that he felt that way. Honestly, the idea of church being a fearful place is something that is not new, but it's been around for thousands of years. Religious leaders have been starting this type of rumor for the last 2,000 years, and it's still making its rounds today. Back in Jesus' time on earth, the religious leaders were always the ones on the Snap and Instagram stories. They were the ones who were on the inside and got the invites because people thought they understood God better than others. They were considered superior to everyone else. To most people in that day and age, it seemed as though God loved them more than everyone else. If God threw a party, they'd be on the A-list and regular people would not make the cut. Basically, they lived with the idea that you must be impressive to be invited. There were a certain type of person you had to be. You had to have a certain type of reputation and lifestyle. People were convinced that only the people who behaved perfectly were welcomed in the presence of God. After all, God's guest list was only extended to the people who were truly deserving of an invitation. So that's what they taught, that God was only for the holy, noble, good, and worthy. And this meant that a lot of people got left out. Like we said last week, we all have a tendency to believe that some groups of people belong in church and others don't. This thought process has been going on for a very long time. Maybe you felt like you don't belong. Maybe you're sitting there thinking, if anyone knew what I've been up to, it would wonder, why am I here? Or if I, as your pastor, knew what you've been thinking, doing, believing, or doubting, I would tell you that you don't belong here. If you ever felt that way, you're not alone, and there's nothing wrong with you. Jesus isn't where this belief comes from. In fact, Jesus made it really clear how he felt about this idea. And he did that by telling a story. Because remember, Jesus was a great storyteller and he told parables to give people insight into what the heart of God is all about. So today we're gonna go take a look at a story that he told about who belongs and fits in. And because people had a habit of thinking one way about it, their minds were blown when Jesus disrupted their beliefs and introduced a different way of thinking. The passage begins with Jesus hanging out with some people at a dinner party. Jesus tells a story about inviting a group of people to a dinner party and a guy jumps in and basically says, what a blessing it will be to attend a feast in the kingdom of God. This dude was really feeling himself. We don't know this for sure, but chances are good that he said this because he assumed that he knew what type of party it would be. So influencers, athletes, and anyone who mattered would be there, the people who were a big deal. And based on the way that religious leaders saw God, he would only invite the most impressive people. But that's not what Jesus had in mind, which is why the great storyteller immediately tells another parable. A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. This is exactly how a parable would begin. Like a normal story, everything is going as you might think it would, a party was planned and now it's time for guests. But this parable, like all parables, had a twist. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. 
If you're the host of this party and you hear that everyone you invited have more important things to do, this would not go over very well at all. And that's how the host of this party felt according to Jesus' story. He was angry and hurt and all this work and no one is going to show. So what does he do? Go out into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. To the people listening to this story, this was a major twist. The host doesn't reschedule. He doesn't send his servants back out to the people that rejected him with the hopes of changing their minds. Nah. The host basically says, if they're not interested in coming, I'm not interested in having them. Go out and find the people who want to be here. The host was a little salty. And that's what the servant does. He invites all the people no one would expect to be there. And when he's done, the servant says there's still room for more. So the host sends him back out and tells the servant to bring in anyone who wants to be there. Why? He wants a full house. He wants people to be there who want to be there. And that's the only qualification. Everyone's invited. The only requirement for getting in is showing up. And the people who do show up are blown away. Why? Because no one had ever considered them to be the kind of people to host at a party. But in God's kingdom, they are exactly the right kind of people. Not because they had a lot of money, not because of their popularity, not connections, choices, religious beliefs, or right choices, but because they wanted to be there. Can you imagine if you were in their position? Think about it, how they felt grateful, honored, special, important. And these were exactly the kind of people who weren't used to feeling accepted with no condition. But in this story, Jesus is saying that that's what the kingdom of God is like. Now, what is Jesus trying to convey with the story? What's the point? In the kingdom of God, everyone is invited. Everyone can belong. You don't have to be impressive to be invited. You don't have to believe to belong. You don't have to behave to belong. You don't have to be good to belong. God's invitation includes everyone. There is always room for more. This means that you are invited and so is the person you never expected to make the A-list. You can say yes to the invitation and you can invite someone else. I hope this changes how you think about church and how you think about the kind of people you thought belong in church what they look like, act like, and think like. Because the most surprising thing about the parable is the best part about it. Everyone is invited. And if you think you're not invited, today I'd like to give you an invitation. No matter who you are or what you've done, you're invited. And if that's something that you want to talk more about, please talk with the leader about that today. And for those of you who are already at the party, I want to challenge you to extend the invitation to others, to people you may have written off before and discounted. They are invited as well, and you could be the one doing the inviting. Remember, everyone is invited. This week, I want you to make a list of five people you know who need to hear this message, that God has extended an invitation for them to belong. Then I want you to speak with your small group leader via text, phone, or snap, and I want you to put together a plan to invite just one of those people. But if nothing else, I want you to leave here today with the change in the way that you think. I want you to start seeing everyone as being invited to the party that God is throwing. I want you to know that there are no qualifications except that you want to be there. And what if we left here remembering that was true? What if we start to see every person, including ourselves that way, as someone who's invited to be a part of a party, as someone who only needed to show up? I think it would change the way we see God and the people around us. Remember, in the kingdom of God, everyone's invited. Let's leave here believing that. Let's be ready to extend that invitation to others.